the notion of how we fix the French teams, so Envious and G2, formerly Titan, is a regular topic of discussion on my channel. And the reason for this is because these are two teams with long storied histories. Obviously, G2, going back into Titan in the very games, was once the best team in the world. And the core of players they had there, some of them are storied in the history of CSGO, whereas Envious, going back into LDLC, is a more new franchise, but have their own very storied history <clears throat> in the more modern day of CSGO. Obviously, they won two majors with different lineups there. And I still think the French scene is one of the most talented and one of the most deep and incredible in terms of all the different roles you can fill within a team. So it will always be natural when these teams underperform and are playing at a low level to look at them and to ask, what piece would you swap around? How could you fix this? And also, key detail is knowing that they themselves they're not like a virtus pro who aren't going to make changes these guys themselves are always thinking about this them as well and then there's this long history of french shuffles where they shuffle players between the teams there's a long history of these teams breaking down after six to nine months of success and top placings and nearly always those breakdowns don't just take place due to individual underperformance it's the other way around underperformance takes place thanks to People becoming lackadaisical, not being as, mo as dedicated to the game. People having personality issues, whether that be direct clashes or just in terms of how it affects motivation of each other or when one person wants to change to a different role or something. So we know at all times these things will change in the French team. So the question is, wh like, what is the state of the teams right now and then what needs to be done? So let's look first of all at G2 because that's the better of the French teams. This is like a top five team in the world quite clearly. They won a huge international tournament in 2016, ECS season one. They were second at a huge international tournament. They almost won EPL. So let's think. The last two months or so, been pretty sick, right? Like I said, ESL, ESEA Pro League, just ESL Pro League nowadays. Season three, they go there, no one's so expecting much from them. They were a couple of rounds from winning that event over Luminosity, now SK Gaming, the best team in the world. And over in the best 5-5 series, they were leading 2-1. to one. Incredible stuff. Then they go home. They're absolutely unreal online. They're just wrecking everyone. Then they go to E-League. They're bodying the whole group. They go all the way. And when they get to the final, they have a letdown against NIP. But even so, overall, impressive performance, some great maps. So they're continuing this super sick form. They go to ECS, ECS Season 1. They win in dominant fashion. The only two maps they lost were actually to Team Liquid, the brand new Team Liquid lineup with Simple and JDM, and they were both on Cobble. Other than that, they smashed Fnatic, they smashed Luminosity, now SK, including beating them on Overpass, which seemed to be a map that no one could beat that team on. They won it in dominant fashion, but where are we at now? Well, they went to the Major, they were in the group of death, they played well, they had great games against SK and against Fnatic, but they end up finishing last place. They're not in the E-League top eight, so right now, this team's in a, in a bad state of affairs, despite the fact they've had this super sick two months, and they have had some solid results, and even won, won a big trophy. Now, there are extenuating circumstances behind that. For example, at the Major, I don't blame them. They were in the group of death. They did lose to the eventual champions, SK Gaming, and a team that eventually finished top four, Fnatic. And they lost in very close fashion to Fnatic. Then you look at E-League. <clears throat> they had to compete in the last chance qualifier, unfortunately, with a stand-in because of health issues for RPKs. So it wasn't their real team. And even then, they narrowly lost that series to Mouse Sports. Otherwise, they would have been playing in the match to decide if they went to the playoffs. So the big issue for me is that I don't think there is an issue with this team. Like, on a perfect world, if they get RPK back and there's no issues with this health, I personally would play it out. I would just see, let's have three or four more lands. And let's see how it goes for you. And if you stay on the sixth streak, or if you do better, or if you do worse, and let's just actually let this lineup run its course. I would do that personally. But I get the sense that the impact of on the player's psyches of finishing last place at the major, not getting any deep run there, not even being in the elite playoffs, I think this will force a change and not least of all, when you consider what's going on in the Envious camp, that means those players might be available. Now, there's also the issue that I have to say, even though I would play it out, because I still want to see what happens for this team, if they can keep it up. The problem is, I have to say, in the next three to six months, I don't think they can keep it up. I actually think this is not, a, unlike SK Gaming, who could go into the best team of all time, and even maybe even get better even, despite how incredible that seems, how incredulous. I don't think that G2 can actually maintain this form. I don't think they can get better. I think actually that right now, this is not going to last. First and foremost, let's think of what it's taking for them to be this insane. Scream and Shocks are at an utterly insane level where they're both clearly top 10 players in the world, absolutely bananas levels. It doesn't seem reliable that, first of all, both can do it, but I, especially the Scream one, like I have to feel like that's going to taper off. He just hasn't had this history of being this insane. Shocks had had for a while. Even Shocks though gets, what, six months out of it at most, three to six months. 
the idea of both of them are just going to say utterly insane. Listen, if they do it, great. It'll be such an amazing anomaly. What a great storyline. I just don't see it happening personally. Then you've got to add in that the trio for that team has been adding RPK in with really solid fragging performances. Not like superstar play, but just solid fragging performances. Again, this is a guy who's been very average for his pro career in CSGO, aside from the very beginning of the game when it was very underdeveloped. He hasn't really managed to have these big stakes and then maintain them. He'll have a big tournament, a few maps. So the fact that he's even doing it as well on a more consistent basis, I don't know if I buy that either. So there's three different very variable factors here that I don't see them all staying the same. Then you've got to add in, when those players aren't playing super sick, I think this team falls apart in, on both sides. On Terra's side, I don't think Shox is a great in-game leader. I think he's doing okay. I think he's putting his players in good positions for how they're playing individually. They're playing very like old-school NIP style. But I don't think their tactics are legit. I don't think there's anything to fall back upon right there. I, as a result, I think that their tactics are too reliant upon these insane skills and guys like Scream just tapping, keep people's heads off when they enter the site. Shock's running in, caught, just causing absolute mayhem on maps like Dust2 and Cash. I don't see that continuing. So I think if some of the skills go away, some of the performances go away, the tactics disappear as well. You see a team that against tier one will be getting like three to five T rounds. Problem as well is they don't even win off T sides now when they go super ham and they're insanely abusing all this sick aim and skills. What they actually win off is CT sides. Now, CT sides, historically, yes, they're built off team play. These guys know each other for a long time, played each other in many different formations, constellations over the years. But a lot of their CT sides, and as famously CT sides are, are based off skill. They stop rushes, people hit shots, people get kills, people put up big numbers. Again, when the skills go, the CT side will go. Since you don't have a reliable T side, you don't have God tier team play, you have good team play, there's going to be issues here. I also taking all that away, don't find this map pool to be believable. I mean, let's be serious for a second. We know, okay, that if you talk about the maps this team is super good on, in terms of their big wins recently, it goes five maps deep out of seven. It goes cash. They're one of the best teams in the whole world on cash. Dust 2, they're utterly insane on Dust 2. The only teams they've lost to, I'm ignoring when they played with a stand-in here, was Luminosity, who admittedly aren't a super sick Dust 2 team, but then Mouse Sports, this is before then, Mouse, obviously, at, at the qualifier. Mouse Sports is obviously an insane Dust2 team. So those aren't even bad teams on Dust2. Train, they're sort of super good on there. Always double figures. The only teams they tended to lose to there are other train teams, i.e. Luminosity, NIP, Gambit. They did lose the Fnatic one at the Major. Now, that was a bit interesting because Fnatic isn't a train team, but that was just Fnatic magic. That wasn't anything to do with Fnatic playing like a clever, intelligent way or figuring something out. That was just insane Fnatic bullshit that happens at big majors. So can't even feel bad about that. Overpass, this wasn't even a map in their pool. Like, yeah, they were playing it when they were G2 and Titan. They had it in the back of their pocket in the existence way. And existence was playing very well on it. But the way they're playing on Overpass, they wrecked Fnatic on that at ECS. They weren't even the one picking it. That was Fnatic's pick. They wrecked Luminosity twice on this map in the EPL and DCS. <coughs> then you got to go over Cobblestone. This is like borderline for them until you consider they've beaten Luminosity on this map. They've lost to Luminosity as well. They've lost to Team Liquid a bunch of times, but then Team Liquid turned out to be one of the best on this map with that lineup. So you've gone five maps deep out of the seven and they've got sick results on nearly all of them. Then you add in Nuke. Oh yeah, they've played Nuke a few times and won it. The only map they don't play basically is Mirage. That's just their ban. So I don't buy that this map pool can stand up because right now this map pool is second only to fucking SK Gaming in terms of how insane it is. I don't buy that they're going to have the second best map pool in the world, especially without great tactics and without super reliable CT sides once some of the skill of any of these players falls off. So as a result, even though I'm saying stick it out, I do think sooner or later changes have to come. And especially when you consider where Envious is at, because Envious is in a much worse situation. So, okay, they're not the Envious of when they, Keo was going out and they were finishing last place. And then they first got Devil, still finishing last place, even at the major. They have improved since then. They finished top four at Malmo. That was no joke. That was a pretty legit top four. It was a very stacked tournament. They were bad online, admittedly. They didn't get to a lot of the offline finals. They qualified for Cologne reasonably decently. Then they went to Cologne. Now, finishing last place at Cologne was very disappointing. I didn't find this to be legit at all because they lost to Team Liquid. Okay, fair enough. Team Liquid turned out to be good on train. You, you, train's in the middle of your map pool. But then they played Mouse as well. Shouldn't be losing to Mouse in that way. That, I think that was train as well. That, that was not a legit way to lose if you're going to be a top team like you think the parts of them are. And why do we think we're going to be a top team? Because at E-League, they've beaten Virtus Pro out. They looked very good. They won on cash. They won on train. We know they're still very good on cash. 
This is a team where they have cobblestone, they have cash, they should be a solid enough team, but there's something lacking here. The team doesn't quite fit its own identity. It's the identity of being now based around Kenny S and Apex Goham. That doesn't even work so often. So we want to think about what are the issues of Envious right now? Well, first of all, Kenny S can't be consistently God tier. Now it's true, not on, on all maps, they haven't switched it around to him, but also he has to dedicate himself. He has to play a lot more. I mean, these are things I can only know from talking to people and I can't reveal too much about them, but he is not as dedicated as the Kenny S that got back into the very game's Titan lineup in early 2014. If he was that guy, I think they could base the whole game around him and he would be very good again. Happy is baiting like a motherfucker. Maybe I'll do a video or something along this topic at one time because I should go really in depth on it because I've watched a lot of these games now and this isn't normal lurk play. This isn't being the guy who's going to come in and clutch rounds and all the rest of it. This is just mad baiting like to a degree that I actually think even though I don't think he necessarily consciously does it maliciously the actual impact on his team is absolutely evil in a sense it's malevolent the way he fucks these guys in the ass and doesn't give them any chance to win by the way he's not being part of the team and not contributing to the system he's trying to play an outdated style of lurk that admittedly he himself invented but doesn't work anymore it definitely doesn't work for him and fucking results bear this out finally devil is just not good enough like it would be nice if we'd given him a chance he's done that we did all that he even got to the in-game leader now he had a few good games at e-league that's about it otherwise he's at best an average level talent admittedly if everyone else in the team played well around him he wouldn't have to be any better than this and they could still be a top four top five team in the world they aren't though so that puts more emphasis on the fact that he's just not that good a player and obviously with kiyoshima returning to form kiyoshima is a better player than devil i don't think that's some crazy statement to make now, interestingly enough, this is where this move will get really cool, is that in the past, the hierarchy ever since LDLC, Got Shocks and NBK and Happy <coughs> has been that they were the number one French team. They were one of the best teams in the world. Titan never was. Titan was always a dark horse and then just a good team. And so the way the transaction always went was up the hierarchy. LDLC Envious were up here. Titan G2 was down here. LDLC Envious took any players they wanted from Titan like this. The only one instance of where there was like a good move the other way is that Titan G2 got shocks. And obviously shocks is still a fantastic player and was still a good player at the time. That's the only time a good player ever went the other way, not in slumping form. And that was just because of disputes within the team. And obviously now that turned out to be a key piece that has turned G2 tight around. But regardless of that, otherwise it was always the good players going the other way. So it was NBK leaving. It was, I mean, I guess Smith's at the time was considered a decent enough player when he went over. It was scenarios like Kenny S and Apex going that way. And it was always the bomb players going the other direction, except for the shocks example. Well, now, I actually think where you consider what's going on, the hierarchy is the other way around. Envious is a big org with a lot of money, sure. G2 arguably is big, very, have a lot of money themselves. They're in a position where they can provide all the things that you'd want if you're in the G2 org. Then you've got to consider. So in terms of money, that's fine. In terms of org, definitely can be done. In terms, so they can also do the buyouts as well, potentially, at G2, if they want to buy players from Envious. In terms of status, I think G2's got the status of being a better team right now than Envious does. In terms of the pieces they have, G2 have a working machine already that's very good. It's got players like RPK running very solid, and Scream and Shock's playing fantastic level Counter-Strike. They've got better pieces right now in terms of how they're functioning than Envious, even though Envious historically has better pieces in their mix. So actually, as a result, and then you add in the fact that G2 is more successful, I think it's going to go the other way this time, or I think it should go the other way this time. It should be G2 taking players from Envious and making their team better, <clears throat> and then Envious making do of what they can with the pieces left over. So the key thing to understand before I go into who I would put on which team is this. The French scene is almost exclusively political. It's not about performance. And all this. It's almost exclusively about politics, interpersonal relationship between people and status of players and who is considered better than the others by the other players. It's not about who's performing better and who's performing worse or how they would perform and how this guy might not be able to perform if you put him in a certain role. That doesn't seem to come into their minds. It's, it's driven and ruled by emotion and, and almost like, this is almost like the behavior you see in the primates, the way that they just follow the alpha and all this sort of like group dynamics that are, look very simplistic to the outside when you consider human society, although admittedly those, that human society shares its own similarities with those sorts of ape cultures, obviously. So now that we talk about that and we mentioned that the scene is very political, the reason I want to put that caveat in place is there is two scenarios here. There is what I think should be done, that's case one, and then there's what will be done, most likely based on politics. So I will look at both teams in light of those two differing scenarios because they're going to be quite different. So let's go to G2 first and imagine they can take players from Envious. 
I think what should be done is G2 should remove Smiths. He's been okay recently, but he's not a good enough AWPA. And for me, to be an AWPA, a primary AWPA, you have to be one of the best players in the team to validate buying that expensive gun all the time, not losing it, not having people have to win a 1v1, then give up their rifle to buy, pick up that AWP and give it to you, and then them sometimes not have a gun, and they're a better player than you. You can't be like that, in my opinion, at the elite level, if you want to be one of the best teams in the world, if, you, if the AWPA has got issues like that. I would remove Smiths. I also think he's still a bit of a choker in, in the huge tournaments. Then I would also remove Body, because here's the thing, Body's been okay as well, but I still don't think he's a good enough player. I've seen enough play t performances where he was just a player in the server. I don't think he adds anything special in terms of role of what he does. So I would remove Smiths and Body, and in their place, I would bring in Kenny S and MBK. I would bring in Kenny S, because we've never had Shox and Kenny S together. I think it would be a very interesting dynamic. Two guys who can be superstars, but now they've got each other to play off. I think NBK is a great role player, and he can fit in many of the positions that we want him to play around, and he can be a good secondary caller if we want to pair him with Shox and work on the system of the, what they're going to do now. Because actually, interestingly, G2 now plays more like Envious used to, not like the old existence line, because they don't have existence in it anymore. Now they are the looser style of play, trying to find good matchups, trying to just get the skilled players rolling and then put them into the right situations where they can make their own decisions. That's exactly the system NBK has been lording from Happy, but Happy can't even do, doesn't even do in their team anymore, and Happy's a mad beta. So I think Kenny S and NBK coming over, this is the team you want to set in place. This will be a very strong individual team. Now it doesn't matter if, say, screen falls off a little bit and just becomes good. Now you've got Kenny S over there. You've got a very skilled support player in MBK. I think this would be a great G2 lineup. Now then, I don't think that is what will happen. What I think will happen is that G2 will remove Scream because he has a history, despite his good recent form, of being the guy that is always critiqued in the French team. Rightfully so, because in the, in the past, before this run of form, it's a guy who was a really overrated star player. He's like the nothing of the French-Belgian scene. He had the odd game that was super sick. He had the status of being really good somehow. Obviously, in his case, because of insane aim. Nothing's obviously from his 1.6 past. And yet, he never fully delivered on it. And he always was the one part, even in very good teams, that was always underperforming a bit or was always underwhelming a bit. Or you always thought, I oh, should be able to get more out of that. Why does he make key mistakes that cost us games? Scream used to be like that. And unfortunately, that still carries in most people's minds. And I, I think in the French scene, most of them are thinking like what I'm thinking. How long can Scream keep it up? I mean, it'd be great if he could. I mean, I'm amazed he actually did it. I never thought he would finally kick into this. I'd waited so long and he didn't until 2016. But they're thinking similar to me, I think, which is that it's going to stop sooner or later. And when it stops, they'd rather have someone else. So I feel like Scream is what they will remove. And then I think Body's the other one, because again, Body has no status, he's a brand new player, hasn't done anything super sick. And I think they will add Kenny S. Yep, like I said, obvious player to add, best player from Envious at the moment. But I think the other player they will add is Happy. Now, if you're asking me why will they add Happy, that's the key question to ask. Don't ask why would you add, why would you add, add Happy. I wouldn't. But why they will add Happy is because this guy is like... Happy and Smiths must be like god-tier fucking hypnotists, the way they've infected the minds of all the players they play with to make all those players just never even consider cutting them, to always think that these guys are so good and that they do something special. And even when they play bad, it's like they, they're the ones fighting in the corner. They go, no, no, he's really doing this X, Y, and Z. And it's like, he's not, look, he's losing the game. He's making bad decisions. He's costing you the game. He's not getting enough kills. No, 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 but he is. He's doing that. It's like, the, you just can't get through to these guys. It's like they're in a mad cult when you talk about these players. So as a result, he's mind-fucked all those guys. So I think Kenny S takes him with him, sadly. And I think even Shocks and all those fuckers probably think, ah, yep, yeah, happy a good player still he used to be really good when he used to beat us before or was my in-game leader before so sadly i think happy goes the other way now in terms of envious if we imagine a world where those two scenarios happen for g2 now we're going to figure out what envious can do so here's what they should do because remember in the should world i have kenny s and mbk leaving them i think in this scenario you do a third removal you remove devil because he just hasn't been good enough, let's face it. And he doesn't even fit the roles of any of them so far. Now, I add in Smiths and Body, who came from, who were the white guys that I've cut from G2, because Smiths can still be an okay AWPA. We're going to have so much skill in this line, but we won't necessarily need a star AWPA. We've got Body, who's just going to be okay, but whatever. He's going to have another chance at the pro scene. Maybe this motivates him. And we're going to add in Existence as the in-game leader, because we need an in-game leader. It hasn't worked out with Devil. It hadn't worked out with MBK. He was barely working with Happy at the end. You know what, if G2's gone the envious way and they've even got a bunch of envious players, then we're going to go the Titan way and we're going to try and build up to be a structured team that's going to play off tactics. And you know what, think of the pieces we've got. Okay, Smith's and Body, not that good. But Smith's has worked very well with Existence throughout his career. He's played with him for a long, long time. 
business is that set in game leader style. We've got MBK still, one of the number one soldiers when he was under existence, played very well. I'm going to put him in more of a star role in Envious now. Actually, wait a second, that doesn't make sense, does it? No, M MBK would be gone in my version. This is still the should. So MBK would be gone. Let me think. We've got Apex and. Who was the other one? Who was the fifth player? We've got Apex. Hmm. Let me think. It would be Apex. Oh, Happy, of course. Yeah, because I didn't take Happy. That would make sense. I'd forgotten about him entirely. So at the moment, in my lineup, we bring in Existence, bring in Smith, bring in Body, and then we've got Apex and Happy. Now, here's the key thing. I'm going to make Happy one of the superstars of my team. The best player, right? Was in all the LDLC lineups. He's a very skilled player, certainly. We're going to make him a star of the team, but... I mean, he would never want to work with the existence. This is why this would never happen. But I would have him have, have set tactics with the existence style. We'd have some loose, happy style tactics. We'd have a hybrid between the two and swip, swap as we needed to, depending on the match. And the star player would be happy, and he would be a lurker still, but he would be a pressure lurker where he would be triggered by existence on the other side of the map <clears throat> when to apply pressure to open up the site, draw rotators over, cut rotators off, and allow us to get better executes onto the site that we're attacking. That's how we'd largely use this guy. And I think he'd be very effective that way. In terms of Apex, Apex now obviously needs to be one of our very skilled players as well, but he's going to be going in with guys like Existence, like Smith, who can back him up, who can offer themselves for the team and put him in a position to show off that insane entry aim he has. I, mean, I think we'd have a good team here. Wouldn't be as good as the G2 one I've made, but I think this could still be a top 10 team. This could be a top seven, 6, 7 team in the world itself. Could be a very good team, actually, if you had the right mix. Obviously, personality-wise, I don't think it'd work. Now, what I think will happen, so remember, because my will for G2 is that they're gonna add Kenny S and Happy and remove Scream and Body, is that we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna remove Devil, we're gonna add Existence, we're gonna add Body, two same moves, but since in the other world they've removed Scream, I'm not gonna add Smiths now, I'm gonna add Scream to this mix. And now I'm gonna do a similar scenario I said with Happy and, um, Happy and Existence, and what I'm gonna do with Scream is, I'm going to pair Scream with Apex so that Scream is the second entry with Apex and the two of them hitting bomb sites together with tactics behind it and a sick lurker. I think this can be a fantastic team. Like, I actually think in this world, in the Will one, they won't make G2 as good because they took over... Uh, let me think. No, because that's it. I've got the wrong way around, haven't I? Yeah, because this time Happy's gone. My bad. So the player I'm left with is MBK. Right, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting Existence. He's the in-game leader. And we're going to have Scream as the second entry with Apex. We're going to have an aggressive system like that. We're going to put NBK as the lurker now, which he was in 2014 Titan, actually. Uh, yeah, they were Titan at the time. He's going to be the lurker. And by the way, he could be a fantastic lurker. He's, a, he's very good in clutches. He's an amazing guy in terms of game sense. And he listens to his guys and he communicates with them. So I think this will be a very good team. It will be an interesting mix, obviously, because it's very different from any other constellation we've ever had in the French scene. But I think tactically, it could be very good. I think in terms of execute style, this could be a fantastic team to watch. And cause the guys over in G2, to me, have fucked their team up a bit by being happy in. I actually think in this world, the envious lineup I've created now has a chance to be better than the G2 one. The G2 one's the better players at the moment, but this one has the style and the balance of pieces where it has a chance to be better, whereas I don't think so in the one where I should because I'm making G2 better in that scenario. Now, both teams in both of these different scenarios would be good. Both would have different styles. But what's more important is going forwards, any French shuffles get, get interesting because now we've got a bigger pool of players, not because of the newer guys they brought in, but because RPK improved a bit because... And especially in terms of respect among the other players. Scream improved a lot. Kenny S is getting back to good form. Shox is in God mode. So the pool of players now in French scenes suddenly become really wide. So we can have lots of shuffles in the future. I do think that Body, Devil and Fox, these LDLC players, don't seem ready or they're just not good enough. But as long as these other pieces are now more tenable, and there's a lot can be done to make both these teams really good teams, both one day maybe potential world number ones.